Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You and welcome to my show. I have a treat for you today. This is not a normal cooking video. I do cook in this video a couple times, but this is our Iceland extravaganza video, right, hon? 2019. Yes. We celebrated our 25th anniversary in Iceland and we are here to show you how to camp Iceland, how to do it great, especially we wanted to show you how to get outside of all of the tourists that now are in Iceland. We went way out to the West Fjords because we found out that it is the least populated place in Iceland. It's like 7 or 8% of the entire population of the country lives out there. Yeah, it's not much. It's like 7,000 people. Right. The West Fjords is untapped territory. And living near Disney and in Florida with all the tourists. We got a lot of them. We had to get out of there, right? That's right. We had to get, we, we can't be by tourists. You know, it, it, we just have to be alone. So we are here to show you how to camp Iceland in the West Fjords. And let me tell you, it was amazing. We had, we had a great time. We stayed in a VW caddy. Yeah. We wanted a VW though, because um, on our one year anniversary, we moved out to California in my grandfather's VW bus. And so this was a recreation yeah. of our one year anniversary in a VW bus. And right. our, our goal also was that we were renewing our vows somewhere in Iceland. That's right. We didn't know where. We, we just, we, we did not have a huge plan for this trip because we just like to be on a road trip and see where it takes us and have an adventure. Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> so after our, our first stop, uh, the first day, so I was very sleep deprived, and we we're driving al around the road, and um, and we see this crack in like this this fissure, this crack in this mountain. Yes, fissure is a good word. Yeah, fissure. It, it was very. Uh, uh, it was ominous. Well, it was uh, Game of Thrones ish. Yeah. That's where the Game of Thrones is shot. Like yeah. Part yeah. Portions of it. So we went there, and we just kind of hiked up to this uh, little river coming out this crack in this rock. Yeah, it wasn't a mountain. It was just a slab of rock right. that, that went for miles and miles. Right. As we're walking the path up, there's a stream coming down, a small stream. And, you know, we thought, great, we're going to be able to get into that crack, you know. And, and we did, except the hiking in the crack, you had to hike and just bounce from river rock to river rock. That was your hike. You're like Spider-Man, scaling yeah, the rocks. Yeah, yeah, you were holding on to the wall, right. scaling. So unfortunately, I had my camera down my pants because I was afraid I was drop gonna- Drop it in the water. Yeah, drop yeah. it in water. And um, it was unplanned, it was unmarked. So different from the US because uh, you know, so many places in the U.S. We know we've got safety lines, oh, yeah. steps, and everything like that, and there it's just like, well, if you fall, you probably yeah, they, should get back up if you fall. Yeah, I don't think they're sue happy there. Yeah, I don't no, think they sue sue places. Not at all. Because no, yeah, they no, don't. This is like they're even aware <laughs> of lawsuits. We were in the. Okay, I'm gonna botch every name besides West Fjords. That's pretty easy to say. But the Snellfest Snell. Sounds good. Snellfest Peninsula. We called it the Snuffle Up. Snuffle, Snuffle up against the And a big Sorry. volcano at the, at a snow capped volcano. So we were driving towards that most of the day. You know, right when we got on this peninsula, you know, we rounded a corner and, and we saw this beautiful big volcano and um, with a glacier on it and it was just absolutely incredible. And by the time we got to the other side of it, we saw where it had blown, blown up and you, that side of the volcano erupted erupted <laughs> sorry that side of the volcano it erupted from the other side right and um you could just see the lava flow west fjords day two just got off the ferry it's amazing a little cloudy we're hoping that the clouds break shortly we didn't have to have a plan in the west fjords to see like a hundred things a day you know we knew we wanted to go to the bird the rock cliffs that day other than that everything was just you know amazing eye candy that we had no idea we were going to see and it, just the scenery everywhere you look is absolutely amazing right everywhere right. and we started that day with really low cloud cloud cover so trey went from the day before being not a cloud in the sky beautiful sunny 
Southern California day. Yeah, yes. To you, the visibility was very Maybe minimal. 150 feet cloud level all day long. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Absolutely. Oh, thank goodness there's a ledge. got through that the one time we got we got through the the gravel and then we're down to a golden sandy beach the tide was out <laughs> so peaceful and the funny part was is we were there on their independence day no on labor their labor day, day weekend labor day. so it was actually crowded to them you know right. so, and the locals <laughs> go to the west fjords so we were like some of the only americans there in fact they said that those we were the only americans they had seen camping there. yeah they said americans don't usually camp here so uh well, they had take us. that challenge that's right take that challenge so speaking of safety um uh, you know, there's always the person that's got to get the best picture ever. And you see them, now this was not us, but you see them like past the line. There was actually a safety line yeah, in this, this one place. Because they were protecting the birds. The birds. They, they were protecting the, us. <laughs> I mean, the safety line was maybe a foot off the ground. but And it said don't go through that. But it did say unstable cliffs. And you see people stretch way out there to try to take a picture. And we even took a picture. Uh, of the birds, try to take a picture of the birds. And we even took a picture of some of the people because I told Kathy, this guy's going to die. We at least need to document that he was here because the, you know, right. the I mean, four police in, in Iceland would probably come to us and we'd have to show them a few pictures. Yeah. Well, and the, the cliffs are very unstable, not just because they're rocky, but because puffins have a burrow in the ground. They actually have two one for garbage and one to live in, believe it or not. You know, they they burrow in the ground so the ground is unstable but you know the Icelanders care about the birds they don't want our weight to be hurting those burrows and but it can give way because there's holes all under there it's a little cave systems all through this 14 kilometers and you can walk all along it it's like puffin catacombs it is absolutely incredible it's and persecuted puffin <laughs> It was day one of West Fjord, it started us off right, but the problem was, is we had to drive that road back to oh, get yeah. to our campground. Right. And that, you know, I was like, oh no. Okay, I gotta, you know, gear up for the drive back. So, on the way back, I cracked open a nice Viking beer. Trey had to drive and I got to have a nice tall boy to calm my nerves and then Trey didn't have such a crazy lady. This tall boy was able to <laughs> yeah. spook drive the car where I need to go. And this this girl drank a tall boy to settle my nerves so I wouldn't be freaking out the whole way to the campground. Right. Alright, we have Icelandic hot dogs on the menu. 80% lamb, 20% just ground up parts I'm assuming. I'm just gonna put my buns on top just to get them warm. Now, the secret to the hot dogs is very simple. Raw onion, French fried kind of fried onion, ketchup, an Icelandic roumelade, and then a special sweet mustard. And that's it. This is the Icelandic hot dog that is loved and one of the most affordable things you can find to eat 
in Reykjavik and anywhere in the country. Mm. What do you think? What's the crunchy? A French fried onion. Mm. That was good. These are the best. And then that night, we ate an amazing meal of... Now, you know, in Iceland, uh, the term amazing meal, you know, has it's a little different than the normal... Iceland ca camping. Iceland camping. It's a little different than Kathy cooks for you, as you'll see, uh, that yeah. you're not normally used to. We were frugal and well-fed. Yeah, yeah. We ate, you know, sheep droppings once in a while if we <laughs> had to. <laughs> yeah. if, we, if we ran out of money before panhandling. That's right. <laughs> before offering sexual favors to the sheep. <laughs> so what we learned on day two camping was, um, you know, before you go to bed, have- You gotta pre-stage it. Yeah, pre-stage, because it's cold. So you have to have your water in your pot for coffee and have everything, your, your burner and the water in the pot either underneath your car ready to go or at a quick door right the door you're going to get out to go make the coffee so the person that was in charge that day of getting up first and getting out the door had everything ready there was no shuffling through because we didn't have room there's not room you can't open the drawer unless you put the bed up saturday morning we thought we'd get a head start on the gravel road up ahead so it would be wet and not so dusty but what we realized is we are missing a lot of views because the sun has not burned the marine layer off one minute later <laughs> we are on the top so the sun has done its job there's what we're driving into I feel like we need Fred Vilma in the mystery machine. Yeah, driving into the Scooby-Doo fog up yonder. We're on a road to nowhere. Come take a ride. Come take a ride to nowhere. Hey. Da -da -da -da. I just ate a brown banana. Converting her one bite oh. at a time. It was uh, pretty bad, but I had to take a pill. Uh, took a quarter of an anxiety pill because we're getting at some crazy roads. And uh, that banana was $4 a pound, so you eat your bananas no matter what they're like. For sure. of nowhere yeah look at that view we just came out of all those clouds top of a fjord top of a fjord it's gorgeous the sun is shining but down below man it's a little dismal at times i'm going to do a little pano for you guys going too fast crazy it's probably dark now because i'm into the sun but that's all right van behind us no one to be found no one you are on your own here it is amazing if you want a vacation away from the crowds west fjords of iceland is for you <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
<laughs> Your belly's hanging out, boy. <laughs> to do meaning two things <laughs> there was a waterfall that we wanted to see and I'm gonna botch the name it's like D Dianji waterfall it's actually a series of like five or six waterfalls leading to the biggest waterfall at the top so it was a hike absolutely incredible I don't know if it was it's not like the biggest bridal waterfall I don't know it's a sight it to be big. seen. It was big. It's a sight to be seen, and it was a great hike. At the Andy, this is the fourth one, and we're climbing up to the big one. Way, can't even see it. <laughs> Going way up there, you can't even see it. Way over there. There was not one tour bus there. The tour buses cannot get into, they can stay at the top of the West Fjords and the bottom, but once you're in the middle, they can't get to that area. It's too crazy to drive in. I'd rather be where there's only 10 people hiking to the waterfall and not 100, right? Mm -hmm. It was amazing, the steps up. And again, we saw some crazy people, you know, having to get that perfect money shot photo, go off under these too. rocks. You know, that are, that, you know, are just hanging. I mean, there wasn't a lot of people in the West Fjords, but there were soon to be even less. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here we are. We made it to the top. 25. Whoa. When we're 50, married 50 years. Where are we going? Uh, Mars. Ah, there we go. We set for Mars. Trey read this article that um, this man lived on this farm. His father was a pastor. They lived on this farm. And um, he had moved to Denmark. They were under Dan Danish rule. And he moved to Denmark in the 30s to go to school. Again, my timeline may be off. Uh, and was just this amazing writer. And basically through pen and paper, and through other poets and writers, they were able to get the Icelandic people to see their worth and to break free from Danish rule. They were actually able to get like home rule and eventually independence. And what's unique about it was that uh, no blood was shed. Yes. In 1944, they broke free from the Danes. And the Icelanders are super proud that they did not have to shed blood, that they were able to use intellect and in the written word um, to inspire their people to say enough is enough. Right. And so Trey thought, gosh, wouldn't that be a great place to ha renew our vows? Such a, such a peaceful place where this man grew up. And, you know, he said there's a, a little church on the property and, you know, a farm. So th this piece of property had some major significance and that we thought that would be a great place for us to renew our vows, but you know, now it has have, even more major, major yeah, significance. Now, now they have us there. That's which right. Is, <laughs> Who cares about Sigurdsson? <laughs> right. So right after we renewed our vows, they had a, they had like this, it wasn't even a cafe. It was a, a I think farmhouse. it was their old farmhouse. It was the farmhouse, yeah. and we were just kind of walking through, looking at it, and we got the very last room, and it was the, they had kind of made several rooms one, and they had some coffee and cake sitting out. Um, so they had just brewed some coffee and uh, the cake was I call it happy marriage cake. Yeah. So we thought, How well, perfect is that? Happy yeah, marriage cake. That got us to Issa Fyodor, where we spent a couple hours just walking, walking around, around going to shops. Right yeah, that's a cruise ship stop. So there we, there we saw um, more tourists because it was a cruise ship port. And, um, cute little town uh, and then we made our way up to Belungervik. I think it's like maybe 20 miles to the north to the north 
Would you like to explain what you did? What did I do? How you hurt Kathy Cooks for you? What did I do? Tell them. Well, helping you clean the dishes last night uh-huh. since you jumped in the kitchen. You didn't clean the dishes. <laughs> you put dirty dishes underneath the our car. van. And then we left them. This morning. So well, I have no, no it, knife. It was our donation to Iceland. I have no knife, no cutting board, and we're down. Uh, we don't have a... No frying pan. A no frying pan. It's a sad, That's sad it. day. So we're camping now, having a beer, and I've got to cook, and I have no supplies to cook with, and I'll figure it out. Good thing we have frozen vegetables tonight, because we can't afford fresh vegetables here. Frozen vegetables it is. Signing out. Is it edible? <laughs> it is edible. Hey. You're camping, you're camping, and edible's okay. It's <laughs> when, not terrible. When you're not having meat products. Right. Because you can't afford them. They're like way too expensive. The more of these little guys I have, the better it tastes. <laughs> there you go. Skull, which means cheers. Thank you for watching Kathy Cooks for You. And we'll see you tomorrow when we're on. Uh, in the West Fjords again. We've decided we think we want to go over there. It's going to take quite a bit longer, but there's this massive glacier. Like, I'm going to botch the name, but it's like Dragonskjöl, something like that. So I think we're going to head that way. Good local music, good local music. We like Iceland. Good local music. Sounds a lot like Leo's stuff. Though. Yeah, this sounds like my dad's beer barrel polka. That is where we were. We just got on the other side of the largest fjord. We are like the only people alive out here. It's amazing. We're the only people on the planet is what it feels like. Absolutely amazing. So after this like two hour drive, we round this corner and pull up to this glacier that, again, technically probably should be roped off this area, you know, because there's no sign saying, do not hike on a glacier by yourself. Now we were, we would, we knew no better not to hike on a glacier, but we hiked close to it and uh, got as close as we felt comfortable. We think we probably were about two half, two half miles away from the base of it. But. Yeah, it, it, it was incredible. Went to get something for dinner tonight. It's early, but was trying to think, oh, maybe with our lamb hot dogs and two cans of free beans I got, two cans of free beans I took from the Happy Camper Pantry, we could maybe have some salad with it. but. Greens are super expensive here. I wasn't going to spend $7 for like four or five ounces of salad. So what we can afford are radishes. 133 krona, which is about $1. So, and they're super good for you. So that's what we're affording and eating tonight. Found this, these two volcanoes that erupted. We're just going to go take a walk off the side of the road. There's the two mountains or volcanoes. Just right off the highway. We didn't even plan this. Okay, we are on top of the volcano. That's right. And this was not in a tour book that we saw. It's just on the side of the road. Just drove by. Yeah. You don't have to plan, plan, plan. Sometimes things come to you. That's right. For free. 
Like this lava rock. We need lava rock at our house. Yeah, we're going to take bags of it. And that's Why not what just Iceland come pick it up at a volcano? Yeah, that's what Iceland wants us to do. That's right. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to go when the volcano blows. All right. We're camping and we're cooking. Remember, we have no knife, no cutting board, and no skillet. I have no idea how any of that happened. <laughs> okay, we did go today to try to replace those items, thinking it might be better than if we were charged. But remember, I, things cost a lot more here. So a cheap knife at a grocery store was $17 and a pan was about- 55. Yeah, yeah. that was Corona. So it was about $48, $48 for a pan. So. Um, yeah, so we, we didn't get that. We thought maybe we'd try Ikea when we went to, through Reykjavik and see if that was any better. I thought that Kathy took for you need to have the challenge. Yes. Anybody could go camping and, That's so know, true. And use a knife and a fry pan and a cutting board. True. But, you know, I really didn't lose it. It was more my, um, you know, my mental state yeah. of really trying to bring out the best in and Kathy, Kathy cooks, cooks for you. For you. Okay, there you go. Boy. It's skull. Skull. First things we're putting in is some free beans from our pantry at Happy Camper. So we're going to pour those in. Then we're going to put in a, about three weenies. These are the Icelandic lamb hot dogs that are super good. You know, all their lamb, their sheep, just roam free. They're all over the roads. Um, they're they're by the ocean i mean it's yeah just, we saw them laying on beaches literally. yeah yeah it's just crazy and they're just all over the place and they're kind of a nuisance when driving all right so there we have our beans and weenies super fancy we have our radishes can't wait to eat those i'm not even washing them let's make trait eat one um super cheap and nice <laughs> Worth eating. Did you throw that? No, away? it was good. It was good. I ate the whole thing. Okay. And then at the grocery store, you know, you gotta look for the 50% off stuff. It's hard to find, but they had these baked goods, these little pizzas for 50% off. And we're just gonna put our pizzas up here like that. And that'll kind of heat our pizza while all those lamby flavors in our hot dogs blend together. Food is really expensive here to go out to eat. You have to prepare your own if you want to go to Iceland on a budget. Oh, and our beer. Eight krona. Eight krona, which means? It's about, what, seven? Uh, six fifty a piece? Per tall boy. That's right. Six sixty, something like that. That's Viking. Yeah. So after we finish this, we're going to strip down naked and run around here. And, and kill them, rape and pillage. That's right. But that probably won't be on camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What not to do in Iceland. Um, what was day one? What did we do? We were like, oh, the Diet Coke. We were going to buy Diet Coke and I didn't ask how much it was. It didn't have a price tag on it. And it ended up being $13 for a six pack of the skinny Diet Cokes. Um, so always look at your prices. Oh, there was ask. a couple times we ran into not really following up with questions yeah. oh <laughs> when you're like sitting waiting to get on a ferry in Iceland and the big Icelandic woman comes up to you and says go ahead and get on the ferry what that means is the people that are driving the vehicle get on the ferry it doesn't mean everybody get on the ferry yeah. we almost left our car one place I went and got on the ferry walk around and Walk down where all the cars are, and I'm like, where's our car? And our car is just sitting out there all by itself. Unlocked, running. Running with the keys on, you know. But hey, I saved the day. And, you know, and again, we should have questioned it because when we were walking past all the other cars, they still had a driver in it. But yet, we, decided, we thought she told us to leave the car. Okay, what else? Um, groceries. You know, food is very expensive, so you have to learn to eat certain things. Peanuts. For some reason, you can get a bag of peanuts in a blue bag for 
198 krona, which is less than two dollars. And you know, it's filling and sustaining. So peanuts are something you want to eat. You also want to eat. Um, Iceland is like one of the most expensive countries to go travel to, mm -hmm. but you can do it on a budget. Yeah, um, we're having beans and weenies. Right. I'm sure our, and our van's going to smell old, interesting tonight. <laughs> day old pizza. That's right. Day old. That's right. Ooh. Day old pizza from the bakery. It's only our intestines that we have to deal with tonight. Right. Bonus and Netto are your cheapest grocery stores. Frozen vegetables is the way to go. So I'd highly recommend uh, Happy Campers. Uh, mm -hmm. when, you know, if you decide you want to camp across, we're not Iceland. getting any money to recommend no, them. No, not yet. Oh, this looks so fancy. It doesn't taste so sweet and fake. The beans is when you get pork and beans at our place because these were just it beans taste and a like, tomato sauce. This is just like crappy American pork and beans. No, it doesn't. That's good too. Half price, so stay tuned. We have left the West Fjords. We're now in central West Iceland. Tomorrow we go to South Iceland for a hot river hike. That means we hike two and a half miles in, change into our bathing suits, soak in a hot river, and then walk two and a half miles out and then head to our campground. Can't wait. Well, I have a video uh, that shows more detail of right. that hike um, but it, it's absolutely incredible to to get to hike you know you can't be modest you know you, you don't want to hike with your bathing suit on because then you have to you know it, that's just not comfortable so you know you there's there's these t cross changing areas and you know what you're in a european country you know you just change and it's part of the experience changing out in the open and if hikers are hiking by it's like so what they got a butt shot <laughs> you'll, you'll never they'll never see you again i do it again yeah it was a wonderful wonderful trip yes i do i'd probably do the ring road next time uh and uh experience i get a bigger camper yes vw california is what we get next time yeah and, but what we liked and what we noticed about our happy camper compared to other campers, even though they had the same size camper as us, I chose happy camper because, because it was happy. It, it was happy. Ours had a little refrigerator. Now it was basically just a plug in cooler, electric cooler, but yeah. we did not need ice. We saw people at campgrounds always having to dump out their ice or clean out their cooler. We didn't have to do that. We had an electric cooler that was always plugged in. We were in. living high on the hall. Yes, and we had basically, I want to call it running water, but you know, you had to pump it, pay like $30 extra. We had Wi-Fi, and we're 100 miles from the Arctic Circle in the middle of nowhere. Texting and and te we could text, and we did, not, we did not text a lot of people. That's true. But we had a map. It was so worth a map. You can enjoy Iceland on a budget and have so much fun and see so much stuff without paying um, those prices to go on tours. We didn't pay for one tour and we had an amazing trip. If you want less people and more of a isolated adventure is what we were looking for, right. this is how you do it. Yeah, we had a great time. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you check out Happy Campers. They made us happy. Even And with, they're not paying us to say that. No. They should. Actually, why are we right. saying that? Yeah, hey, hey, Happy Campers, pay us to go on another trip, and we'll do this again for you. How about that? But next time, we're going large. It's California. So hook us up, Happy Camper. What do you think?